begin our time with some words of reflection as we uh, begin worship. And our, our focus for this morning is the Matthew uh, chapter 11 text. As Jesus tells us, Come to me all that you are weary and bearing heavy burdens. I will give you rest. And sometimes we feel the burdens of life. And so we come today for that moment, that time of rest and presence in God's love. We'll start with some of our own reflective words. Please respond as indicated with the words that are highlighted. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. I invite you to take a moment just for your own reflection upon your journeys this past week and the days yet to come. Together we pray. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. So in the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners and for his sake. God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing together our song of praise this morning. Give me Jesus. Let us sing. Our gospel this morning is according to, to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, 
To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that you are weary, all that all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, once again, it is good to be back with you. I was uh, back officially last weekend from a month-long sa Sabbath time, and, uh, but I missed some of you, so so good to be back among you and to see you again. I know many of you have had significant life events in this one month, marriages that I get to be part of. Ashley and Corey, congratulations. Yes, and uh, major surgery for some people uh, on the path to health and healing. So um, it is good to be with you. My prayers have been with you and will continue to be. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This well-known passage from Matthew, this well-known verse, is one that I have read nearly every day for the past 17 years. On the day of my ordination, a woman from my home congregation gave me a beautiful picture of the face of Jesus. Jesus has a humble, yearning, gentle look upon his face. And down below the picture of his face is this verse, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. There have been many times throughout the years in which I have read this verse and have been deeply comforted by it. Jesus' invitation to come to him and find rest in him is as welcome as a tall glass of cold water on a hot summer day when one is weary. But there are also times in which I have found this verse to be just as discomforting. Though it is not scripted on the beautiful picture of Jesus above my desk, I know it's there, the rest of this passage. The rest of this passage is a charge. It is a command that follows Jesus' invitation to find rest. The charge is to take up his yoke, to learn from him, so that, in order that, our souls may find rest. And it sounds easy enough, doesn't it, to take on the yoke of Jesus. Indeed, my restless heart knows, deep down, that it is ultimately restless for God. And that by taking on the yoke of Jesus, I am that much closer to peace. But when it comes right down to it, I don't want to be tethered to a yoke. Do you? <laughs> I don't want to be led anywhere. I want to go where I want to go. I want to do things as I want to do them on my own schedule. Life should be according to plan, right? And of course, that doesn't go that way. I know it would be useful. It would be good. It would be right for me to be yoked to Jesus, to choose that yoke each and every day. But as the Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 7, Another reading that is assigned for us today. I do not understand my own actions. I do the very thing that I hate. Can you relate to that? <laughs> I've got both hands and one foot up. 
And those things that I know I shouldn't do are usually the ones that get me in some sort of trouble, whether they be big or little. For example, eating that piece of cake when I am already full makes me certain, even though I know it, I'm going to have a bellyache, I'll still eat it. Alternatively, thinking that I am young enough and strong enough to go on that extra long route on my bike means my muscles will be sore for days, and I will continuously wonder when I am doing easy daily tasks, why did I choose to go that extra mile? Why did I choose to go up that extra hill? And then there are those other things that I do that I wish I wouldn't, that I don't like to think about as much. The hurt that I might have caused by saying too much or too little. The fear of rejection that leads to loneliness and isolation. The fear of making a mistake that leads to missed opportunities and greater joy. Jesus' promise is that taking on his yoke will lead to greater rest in our restless spirits and a lightness in our burdens. But we know from taking on the yoke of Christ that it comes at a cost. And so does taking on any other yoke. We cannot take on any yoke, including the yoke of Christ, without giving something up in return. And while that something will look different, feel different for each and every one of us here, it ultimately boils down to one thing that we must give up or give, and that is trust. In order to take on the yoke of Christ, we have to trust that God's desire for us to know joy, peace, and hope is just as great as our own. Let me say that one more time because I'm preaching to the preacher first of all. (laughs) In order to take on the yoke of Christ, we have to trust that God's desire for us to know love and joy and peace is just as great as our own desire for ourselves. And I think that many of us don't trust that. And that's why we do things that we do. That's the nature of sin. We don't really believe that God loves us so much that his will is greater for us than our own. That God's desire for us to know love and joy and peace in our lives could possibly be as great as my own. So I'll just go my own way. Thank you very much, God. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Thank you. I have a, a card in my desk that I look at from time to time. I've never sent it because I really think that ultimately I bought it for myself, (laughs) probably 20 years ago, and it remains in my desk. And it says this, we are not accustomed to thinking that God's desire for our lives and our own desires for our lives could possibly be the same. We are not accustomed to thinking that what God desires for us and what we desire could possibly be the same. But that's how God works. God puts that desire in our hearts. If you're feeling a tug to greater joy, that's God. God is always leading you to something greater, to something more peaceful, to something more joyful. And it may not be the path that you have chosen, but God knows what God is doing. The problem is trusting that promise. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is here addressing the people of Israel who are burdened and weighed down with the legal do's and don'ts of the religious leaders of the day who are called Pharisees. And Jesus warned the people of the legalistic ways of the Pharisees. He says in Matthew 23, the Pharisees tie up heavy loads and lay them on people's shoulders. The Pharisees proclaimed that their legalistic ways were the only path to God, that if you did this and you did this and you did this and you did this, then maybe you would find peace. But rather than freedom, their ways brought oppression. They brought a sense of guilt, a sense of failure, a sense of never being or doing enough. Those who were under the authority of the Pharisees were said to be under the yoke of the Pharisees. 
We are all yoked to something, aren't we? It is into this setting that Jesus makes an, an invitation to all to know true joy and relief through a relationship with him. His frustration at his attempts at getting people to listen and follow him is evident in the first verses of our passage. But to what will I compare this generation, Jesus says. He likens the people to the children of the day who would put on dramas of weddings and funerals in the marketplaces. That is what this passage refers to. And the children would play the celebratory flute as if they were at a wedding, or they would wail as if they were bereaved, and they would get very upset if others did not participate in singing and dancing as if at a wedding, or in wailing or mourning as if at a funeral. Jesus makes it clear that his invitation to a new way of life is for all people, not only those who follow the certain do's and don'ts, but this is for the committed and the skeptical alike, and is offered by the most gracious, humble, patient servant of God, Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, my parents purchased two Morgan horses. Morgans are known for their gentleness. The elder horse was named Quinn, and Quinn's colt was named Quinby. In a short period of time, it became clear that Quinby was going to be a lot to handle. His first two years of life gave my dad good fodder for fun stories. If there was trouble for a horse to get into, Quinby had exhausted all possibilities, and then some, in his two years of life. At one point, it looked as if my dad was at his rope's end with Quinby. After countless hours of working with him and trying my dad's patience over and over again, my dad was considering the possibility that maybe Quinby needed a new home. And it was at that point, kind of at his wit's end, that my dad said, you know, maybe Quinby needs a job, something that is all his own. And so in the spring of his third year, my dad started to train Quinby to pull a cart. And it didn't take us long to see that that was exactly what Quinby needed. Shortly after my dad started teaching Quinby to pull a cart, I walked behind taking a picture that is also on my desk of Quinby pulling a cart with my dad and our two girls who were about eight and four at the time. A different kind of harness is pulled, is used for pulling a cart, than is used for walking or is used for riding a horse. And so he had to get used to this different harness, to being yoked in a different way. But watching him trot, it became apparent to all of us, his ears up, his shoulders back, that a, that a harness, a different harness, a different yoke, a purpose, was exactly what Quinby needed. He needed to have a purpose, a way of being in the world that made a difference to someone else. Something that gave him an identity all his own. And in that identity, he found confidence. Indeed, he found his stride. The yoke of Christ was put upon us in our baptisms. But the decision to trust and walk in that yoke is a difficult sometimes and daily choice. Jesus' invitation can be as inviting and as discomforting as it is comforting, as unsettling as it is peaceful. Being yoked to Jesus means going where Jesus goes. It means loving whom Jesus loves. It means not always knowing exactly, this is the tough part for me, where God is leading. And yet even in the darkness, Jesus says, we can take hold of the promises of Christ, that daily darkness always leads to light, that daily dying always leads to resurrection, that leaving behind doesn't mean leaving everything. It means leading a new life, going into a new path that is filled with wholeness, purpose, and even greater joy. As a complete aside, but perhaps as an addendum that is helpful to this sermon, after my dad died, my mother, who never wanted to ride Quinby 
because of all the reasons that I've just stated. <laughs> Queen Bee was to be my mother's horse. <laughs> and after my dad died and we sold the horses, which was a difficult day, of course. Many of you have experienced things like that. Help me out here. My mother bought, what kind of car does she drive? It's a Ford Mustang, a convertible, and it's red. And she said, it has the horsepower that your dad would approve of. It's a Mustang, so it's a horse. And guess what is on her license plate? Quinby 2. <laughs> For this we say, thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> We hold in our prayers today all of those who are listed in front of us. Of course, we highlight a few that we want you to know a few things about. Sue Bry continues to be hospitalized. She is listed under home, but she is hospitalized. Um, her recovery from transplant is going well, but she fell uh, a little while ago and has numerous fractures in her back. And so she is dealing with that, recovering well. Her patience is strong. Her spirit is amazing. 
but she asks for prayers as she continues to be in recovery from that. Um, Fritz is back. Good to have you back in worship, Fritz. And uh, of course, Kayla and Craig uh, continue their journey through transplant, and uh, we pray for you all. A couple families we hold in prayers, especially Harlan Rood, who passed away last week. His funeral was on Thursday. And for the family of Gary Volden, Gary passed away uh, this past week. His funeral will be Tuesday, 2 p.m. at Vasateg Funeral Home. Let us pray. Our petitions will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know the things that are upon our hearts and our minds, all those things that pull us in so many different directions. Help us be confident in our steps, courageous in our callings, and warm and gentle in our spirits. Lead your church in the way of service. We pray for the new leaders who are lifted up in all assets and all, all facets of our life together. And help all of us be led to new places and new, use new words and help us revitalize our old and our traditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of this growing season, bless and encourage all who work the land to feed your people. Give them joy and vocation. We pray for good rain, for good sun, for health of all livestock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy One, you command peace to the nations. Give peaceful hearts and discerning minds to world leaders and citizens alike. We pray that all who suffer violence and hunger will come to know the fullness of life. So where the people of this world are hungry, we pray for food. Where the people of this world suffer violence and war, we pray that common sense prevails and we can find peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you bid the weary come to you for rest. Renew energy of bone-tired people. Support our brothers and sisters who are burdened by grief, by loneliness, by illness. We especially lift up Sue Bry. Be with her on her journey towards recovery and all whom we carry with us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, have compassion for all that you have made. Show our congregation what mercy looks like in our community, that we may become faithful partners in your ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the people who have blessed our lives, for saints among us whose steadfast faith has strengthened ours, for those who are who searched their whole life in their journey. But today we lift up the families of Harlan Rood, Gary Volden, and all those who walk in grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and all these things. Whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll take some time to receive our offering this morning. Thank you for all your gifts. And a reminder for our sign-up sheet as we share the gifts of our ministry with each other to keep that moving along. Any kids that are with us today that would like to uh, come up to Dan and get a change jar to collect that for our, our uh, noisy offering, please come on up. Thank you for all you're able to do. Please stand. Let us sing together.
Today we come together, are gathered in by God today, and we come with so many things upon our heart and mind. So we pause here for this moment and let Christ come to us to reach into our, our very depths of our being and to remind us that he leads us in all of our difficult steps and amazing days. And we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new blood in my covenant shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ forever strengthen you, keep you in his grace and his peace all these days. Amen. Go with these words. May God, whose power working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless you now forever. Amen. We sing together, If you but trust in God to guide you. Words are on the screen. 769 verses 1, 2, and 4. Let us sing. Peace of the Lord be with you all. As you go this day, please share that peace with one another.